Hi, this is a lecture on how to deal with data in an experiment whenever we're do dealing with multiple trials and how to, um, how to deal with the uncertainties for experimental data, in particular in IB Sciences. Uh, so this is an IB Science class, and you'll have to do some experiments. Whenever we do experiments of your own design, you're, gonna, uh, you're going to need to do six different variations of your independent variable. And for each variation, you have to conduct at least three trials uh, to gather the values of your dependent variable. And what we're going to do with these three trials is just average them together. This will help account for some of the random uncertainty in our experiment that we can't control. Uh, here's what a good data table looks like. On our left, we have the independent variable. Here in the middle, we have uh, our raw data, our sam sample data for each of the trials of our dependent variable. And here we have an average of our three trials, our column for the average of our three trials for each variation. So this is going to be like our dependent variable. And if we look at the headers, um, these are really good headers. It has all the information that we need about our variables. We have the name of the variable, we have the symbol and the units of the variable, and then we have the uncertainty for the variable. That is if the uncertainty is the same for every trial. It's not always going to be the same. Um, it, could be, it could be the same for every measurement because, we're, because it's the measurement uncertainty and it's always this amount, which is what I expect is going on here. However, uh, it could also be a constant percent uncertainty. And you could write delta H is plus or minus 4%. Um, However, most of the time, it's not going to be the same uncertainty for every trial. We'll have to calculate it for each individual, not trial. Uh, we'll have to calculate it for each variation. But this has everything we need. So in order to determine the uncertainty in the dependent variable, we are going to look at uh, just an excerpt from the previous table. Now, to get our average rebound height, we just averaged our three trials together. And an average is, of course, you add up all the values and then you divide by the number of values. To get the uncertainty, what we're going to do is take the range of values among the three trials and divide by two. That is, take the maximum value, subtract the minimum value to get the range, and divide that by two. So in this case, the largest is 53.4, the smallest is 49.6. Subtract them, divide by 2 to get our uncertainty of 2.0. And that's where the uncertainty of 2.0 comes from in this height. Really, we should be doing that for each individual variation, because each individual variation should have the same uncertainty. Uh, one other thing to note, in this table and the previous table, this should really be written as 2 centimeters, not 2.0 because um, we really only need one sig fig in this uncertainty. And also, our, our final average measurement is only precise to the nearest one, so our uncertainty should be precise only to the ones digit. We don't need that tenths place. So let's just do a full example calculation. So here's the data table we have in our left column, mass added in kilograms, and this is our measurement uncertainty. It's very small. 0 0.001 kilogram, which is a gram. And here's our measured displacement in centimeters. We have plus or minus 0.1 centimeters of um, measurement uncertainty here. So first thing we're going to do is find the average displacement, which I'm going to write at, well, average displacement is x bar. Didn't show up. Whenever we have a bar above a variable, that means average. So let's take the average of the first trial x values, 7.2 plus 7.6, that's the first variation, plus 7.3 plus 7.1. And since we have four trials, we divide by four. 7.2 plus 7.6 plus 7.3 plus 7.1. And that gives us 7.3. And we want our precision to be as precise as our other measurements. 
These are all precise to the one tenths place, so this should be precise to the tenths place. Let's take the average of the second one. I'm not going to write it out. 8.8 plus 8.5 plus 8.8 plus 8.7. And I'm getting, divide by 4, getting exactly 8.7. So next up, we need to find the uncertainties. Uncertainties are going to be the range over 2. So I'm going to write delta x for 450. We're just going to take the largest value, which is 7.6, minus the smallest value, 7.1, and divide by 2, which gives us uh, 0.5 over 2, which is... 0.25. And we're going to round that to the first significant digit, so our uncertainty is 0 0.3. We're going to do the second one again. The largest value is 8.8. .8. The smallest value is 8.5. We divide by two. subtract them and divide by 2, we get 0 0.15 or 0 0.2 uncertainty. So that's how we calculate our uncertainties for each trial. Or each try, each variation, each variation. But we also want to incorporate these uncertainties into our graphs. Whenever we have data like this, we're going to create a scatter plot. But we only graph the average value. We don't graph each individual trial. Um, and so we create a scatter plot with the average value. That way, we don't have all these extra points here. This just show, the dots show us the overall trend. And we graph the uncertainties as error bars on the graph. Those are these little bars that are showing up on the graph. So the length of the error bar is equal to the uncertainty. The, uncer uh, the error bar will be drawn both above and below each data point, depending on the length of the error bar. Sometimes the uncertainties are too small to see or too small to draw. Um, if that's the case, you just need to make a note that the uncertainties for this variable are too small to see or draw. Um, another thing to note is because we have two variables, we can have uncertainty in the x variable or the y variable, and we could draw both vertical and horizontal error bars. For the IB, we only need one or the other. We don't need both, and we're just going to draw whichever ones are more significant, so whichever ones look bigger on the graph. Once we have our uh, points plotted, our average points plotted, and we have our error bars, we draw a best fit line fits all the data points as well as possible, and we'll get the equation as well. So just to go a little bit more in depth with error bars, the size of the error bar um, is just the uncertainty. So in here our uncertainty is 2.0 centimeters, which means our, and it's plus or minus 2.0 centimeters, so for each data point it's going to be 2 centimeters, that bar is going to go up 2 centimeters above the data point and 2 centimeters below. Each of these little squares ends up being 2 centimeters, since 5 of these boxes is 10 centimeters. So each error bar will be 1 square up and 1 square down. And the error bar shows us the range of possible values of our measurement. It accounts for the fact that we don't know this measurement exactly, but we expect that it's going to be somewhere in between. The true value is going to be somewhere in between those error bars. So in summary, we need at least six variations in three trials each in an experiment. Uh, we have to include our measurement uncertainty in our table headings. We need to average our trials for each variation, and then we can take the uncertainty as the range of values divided by two. And we want to include error bars in our graphs. That's all. I hope that was helpful. Bye.